Amber. Yes. I've been really stuck on this idea of cocaine hippos, which is a kind of a Dave thing and not an Amber thing. So I'm just going to kind of drag you through this, but Wait. It, it's important to me. Cocaine hippos? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I don't know what this thing is. Well, okay. Back in the 80s, 90s, Pablo Escobar was a huge like drug yes. kingpin in Colombia. And had like unimaginable wealth. The guy was mm -hmm. all the terrible things he did. He amassed a lot of money and actually did a lot of good things for the for the poor people of Colombia in that area he lived. But neither here nor there, among the things he did with his fabulous wealth is he had a private zoo as people are wont to do. Mm -hmm. And when he was killed, you know, after the resulting legal wrangling about his estate, he the authorities came in and, and took the animals from his private zoo, except for apparently the hippos, because they were too difficult to catch or they ran away or for okay. whatever reason, they couldn't get the hippos. And the hippos kind of like living in the Colombian jungle. And and they've okay. they've thrived and multiplied, and now there is a a herd of several dozen hippopotami running around in the Colombian jungle. Okay, and they're not obviously natives, right? To no, Australia. no, yeah. they're native to Africa. Yeah, and they're they're vastly like they they're absolutely an invasive species, and and besides that, they're vicious. I mean, hippos. Yeah, hippos are scary. Yeah, they're scary and they're they're deadly and. Uh, but there's such a novelty and they're, you know, in this remote area that people aren't really doing anything about it, or at least they hadn't for a long time. Right. And, you know, it's a place that, that's, uh, you know, severely underdeveloped and they don't have money for essential things, much less some kind of program to manage the hippopotamuses. And so you've got all these hippos mm -hmm. running around and it's just the craziest thing to me. And, you know, the, the people that live in that area, like, there's just hippos now. Like, it's a thing. Okay, that's cool. So, there, you have Pablo Escobar's old zoo hippos living in Colombia. Yeah. And where does the cocaine fit into all of this? Because he was a cocaine kingpin. Oh. And so, the hippos were purchased okay. through cocaine. Do you want to I know. You I... wanted hippos that were on cocaine. <laughs> yes. You don't? say to me cocaine hippos and not like you got me so excited for like rampaging high as shit hippos like somebody was using them which would be horrible as like drug mules drug hippos and <laughs> they exploded cocaine into their system and then they went on a rampage and destroyed a bunch of people because like hippos are already yeah. terrifying as is right. without being high as shit like, imagine what a hippo would be like if it was on fucking cocaine. It would just run to the yeah. ends of the earth, destroy all that it saw. Right, right. It totally would. Absolutely. Absolutely. And hippos could swim. Yeah, so hippos could. I mean, they can't climb trees. No. But they can knock down they all the trees. They can knock down trees. So they would swim across to America and just start destroying everything. I'm disappointed in this story. It was not as fantastical. As I hoped it to be. I so I told you it wasn't an Amber thing. It was it was more of a Dave thing. But I like the idea. I like where you're taking it. Okay. I can understand and appreciate the baseline funniness of, like, why these hippos exist. Because you had somebody who just had money and wanted a zoo and brought animals into wherever. And then nobody knows how to deal with them right. after he's dead. And it's just like, well, we got hippos now. <laughs> yeah there's well and apparently hippos. like there there's a there's a lot of discussion as to whether or not they're actually good for the environment because oh yeah in that in the amazonian like ecosystem there are no more large herbivores they've all been extinct and so they're doing those hippos are doing work and like maintaining riverbanks and like you know yeah uh, they're filling an ecological niche that probably was filled several thousand years ago by other animals, but uh, but also like they're not native, and the, you know the ecosystem has kind of evolved without them. So there there's a whole discussion about it, but 
apparently there's some nonprofit out there who's trying to castrate the hippos, which sounds like a a really Ugh. terrible job. Like, could you imagine if it's like, hey, so you work for us, the zoo, a naturalist. You're, you yeah. work for Parks and Rec in Columbia. I, I would like it to be like a like a temp agency. Like oh, you don't yeah. know where you're gonna go, and like, hey, uh, show show up to the to such and such nonprofit today. Okay, man, I'm uh, I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna prove myself. It's gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> Your first day on the job. So here's a giant scalpel and a dart gun. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're gonna the, the, go. The, the will be completely ineffective. Shows. Yeah, the dart gun's just to make you feel better. Yeah. So that. Because the hippo's all coked up. He, he's immune to, like, tranquilizers <laughs> yes. at this point. If actually, the cocaine mixture with the trank is uppers and downers at the same time. He becomes even right. more Speedball, yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. So, but no, good luck. My question from all of this, then, becomes how jobs become. Like, <laughs> is there just, like, a situation where, like, bunch of veterinarians have these like mini guilds where it's like when it's time to call to action we take care of the weird uh natural defense like natural stuff that happens in the world like what kind of group is that also that would make for a really good role-playing game premise where like that would actually where you have to get your on call you have your regular job right like you are literally a vet on in your day-to-day you work for zoos or you right. have your own like local establishments and stuff. But then there is a red phone on your desk that mm-hmm. uh, when rings sounds like a howler monkey screaming and you pick it up <laughs> and it's some man in the shadows or some figure in the shadows telling you, all right, uh, Chad, Drick, I don't know what to call this person. Doctor. Yes. Huh? Dr. Dr. Chadwick, yes. Yes. It's time. We have to assemble the castration team. Yeah. All right. No. <laughs> we got wild hippos. Yes, go ahead. Hopped up on cocaine. <laughs> no one else can do the job, Dr. Chadwick. And then he like goes, oh, it's time. And he pulls the sleeves off of his veterinary coat. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like a... Off his lab coat. Yeah. yeah. And he's like flexes. And then you he whips open his coat and he checks his side. He's got like a bunch of like needles and tools and a gun. But like crazy like steampunk like devices in there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like Charlie's yeah, Angels and, and Men like... in Black, but also like Hippocampotamus. Yeah. Yeah, so I like to imagine now this team exists in the world. Um, mm-hmm. Every vet has a uh, secret phone in their office where at any given point in time, it's like the, the natural animal defense team or something. Yeah, yeah. Like the when there's N-A-D-T. crazy animal emergencies. Right. Mostly has to do with castration. <laughs> their main <laughs> call. <laughs> well, I'd like to think like when like... You know, Planet of the Apes happens. They get they get called too. Like, hey, oh, yeah, monkeys definitely. have learned how to like talk and wear clothes and like shoot guns at us. Can can you guys do something about that? Doctor Chadwick is on the case. Yeah, and they get like, do you think it's um? Nope, I'm not gonna get making it too real. I'm not gonna talk about funding. Fun. Yeah, they just have no. limited funds. Right. It's it's a secret secret like black ops kind of funding. Yep. Mm-hmm. God, I would play that mm-hmm. game. That would be a fun game. Can you imagine us playing it with Chris? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Dang. It's a good premise. And, 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 and it's probably a good premise for like some like short story fiction to post on the internet, too. Yeah. I was going to say, there was a game. I know you play some games, but not you're not a gamer, even though you claim to, I, I, claim I'm to a be professional a secret gamer. pro gamer. Yes. Yeah. Castle Fights. Okay, all right. Right. So, because you do pro gaming, you may not do casual gaming, which is what I do. Oh, And yeah. there was a game that came out for PS3 or PS4 called Tokyo Jungle, mm. Um, mm. where basically there are no humans in Tokyo, and you get to play as animals, and you have objectives to meet as you run the streets, and you get to play as 
varying types of packs. So like there's a corgi pack, hmm. there's ostrich pack, there's like cheetah packs, goat packs, and you're just going through and the game the whole purpose of the game is like to get to certain areas and like you have certain objectives and some of it's like mating and growing your pack and like you don't want to get eaten. It's the Tokyo jungle. That's what I would I think hippos was part of it. And so when you were telling me about these cocaine hippos, I just immediately thought of Tokyo Jungle. Again, I'm a casual gamer. You probably haven't heard of it as a pro gamer. Right, um, right. No, I haven't. But yeah, I imagine like, the, you know, the, the the monkeys are like, hey, the hippos are out there. We got to go take care of them. Yep. And all the monkeys like descend from the trees and the hippos are just, kum, 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 kum. no more monkeys. <laughs> exactly. It's so like to play as a hippo when you have chihuahuas or something, it's like, Right. Yeah, it's like it's like zero level difficulty. Yep. Ah, oh, man, I really wish that <sighs> was a true cocaine up hippo. Really let me do. I mean, you days. could probably. That sounds like a very super villain kind of goal, but you could do it. Oh yeah. They're wild. They're wild hippos in Colombia. Yes. Get a bunch of cocaine. Go there. Uh, I'm looking up know, cocaine hippos right now. A stuff like a chicken carcass with cocaine. Is like ten thousand dollars worth of cocaine and feed it to the hippo. Well, they literally just do call them cocaine hippos, huh? Yeah, isn't that crazy? I mean, it's a good name. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't have possibly named them anything better. No. <laughs> Pablo Escobar's hippos threatening Colombian residents. Give me all your That's drugs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got a knife. Well, I mean, t- t- to be fair. Like, if you go out to take the dog on a walk today and there's a hippo, like, stomping <laughs> around, you're going to like, holy shit, I got to go inside. Yeah. Uh, your house isn't going to protect you if that hippo wants your drugs or your dog right. or your money or your wife. <laughs> <laughs> These walls mean Sorry, nothing. Amber. The hippo loves me more. The hippo just takes the wife over, over the shoulder, trots off into the jungle. Go, go, Angela. I don't care for you anymore. If you want to be with a hippo, I can't stop you. Cut to me getting onto my computer, typing up, I've been hurt badly by my wives. <laughs> if I'm looking for a wood who doesn't love hippos, <laughs> please appreciate the fact that I am a human male and will give you love like a human male should. But if you love hippos, please do not come to me because I've been hurt very bad by women who love hippos. That's my dating yes. profile. Perfect. That's not as good as the random generated one. Shut up. That's beautiful. The random generator could be this charming. <laughs> hey, Amber. Hey, Kenny. I got a question for you. Okie dokie. If you were a burn spell, how much damage would you do? Infinity! <laughs> so greedy. Infinity, infinity, infinity! Kill all creatures! Speaking of infinity, if you want infinite good content, you should check out our Magic the Gathering podcast, Red Mage, Blue Mage, on the Geek Spective Network. Right, you'll hear great content, such as uh, me reading you fan fiction, <laughs> and also us asking each other more stupid questions, and... Uh, Talking about constructing and designing cards. Yeah, and doing cube drafts and commander games against each other. You can hear this content, this infinite content, on Spotify, iTunes, and other major platforms. You can find us on Twitter at RedBlueMTG. So why don't you come along over? Yeah, yeah, fuck. <laughs> So, Amber, did you know that we do have a Pellets of Wisdom this week? Oh, shit. Did a hippo drop it off for us? Uh, no, actually. It was a uh, it, it was an email to our email. It's oh. owls at geekspective.com. And if you, dear listener, you have questions for us, uh, general life advice or what have you, uh, that Amber and I can tackle in, in the astute and learned way that we do, please send us an email. Owls at geekspective.com. Uh, This week's uh, email comes from Barney, and he writes and says, I have a co-worker who is pretty religious, and she's older than me. She was born in the year 1969. 
every time the Brian Adams song Summer of 69 comes on the radio, she tells everybody that she feels like that song is about her because she was born in the summer of 1969. I recently came across a piece of information that tells me that this song is not about the year 1969, but rather the other. Now, every time she mentions this, I giggle, but I'm not comfortable bringing up this very sordid subject with someone who has a very conservative religious outlook. What do I do? Wow. Wait, I'm looking up. First, I'm Googling the song. Yeah. I know the song. Uh, right. I mean, it's it. just one of those classic rock songs, right? Yeah. What is it? I'm looking up trying to find the meaning for it. So both of the songwriters support the theories. So it could be both. Okay, so it could be it could mean the same thing. It's like it happened in the summer of 69 and also they were doing 69 in the summer of 69. Okay, fine. How do you bring us how old is this woman? She he said she was born in 69. Older so. is what it says. Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah. Well, if she was born in 69, then she's like my parents' age. So she's like 51. So wow. Um, first off, my first thing would be like, how close are you to this person? Like, I always think to myself, is it somebody that I would care about? Like if they're hurting their reputation or something embarrassing, would I really, do I have personal stake in this person? If the answer is yes, that I would, I still don't even know. I understand the, uh. How they would be hesitant to like bring that up with a see, coworker because see, yes. like because I mean it's not a very work friendly conversation. No, and, and this doesn't sound like a coworker who would be receptive. Like if it was you, I'd be like, "Hey, Amber, you know, actually, that's uh, not what you yeah. think it is." Ha ha ha! Right, and then we would all have a good laugh about it, and and it would prevent you from making that awkward mistake in other company, right? Like if you're right. at a barbecue and the song comes on, like. Uh, and so I understand the idea that, like, e- even if he likes his coworker, he might want to say something because. But if, if I suppose that that's what it comes down to, right? If if he likes the coworker, then then he needs to do the difficult thing and have the conversation. Right. But if he doesn't, then you know, let this crazy woman believe that, like, a uh, right. very very kind of sexual song is is about her. Right. I was going to say, for me, I've been in that position before where it's like, but it was with my mom. She didn't know what the word <laughs> cybering meant. And I was like, mom, this is a, f- okay, this is a kind of saddish, funny story because she was like trying to like come up with some sort of business idea or some way to make side mummy, s- side mummy, <laughs> side <laughs> money. And she had a friend who could like write poetry uh, did like those like first letter and then made like were like things and like oh, yeah. my yeah, yeah. stepdad met online playing cribbage or whatever and they had she had made an example poem using the word cybering or cyber or something uh-huh. and I was like mom cybering is like a synonym it was like like when you hear that it's synonymous with like sexting or like role play sex stuff like you can't and I, and I was like I had to explain that to my mom which was like sad because she was super excited about this cool poem she got and like right. also embarrassing because I'm like mom weird yeah, this isn't playing cribbage with with a guy yeah 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 like now I've got this image in my head ah so yeah it's like okay I did that with my mom but your Janice is not your mom, Barney. Um, she's your coworker. Right. And yeah, it would be very awkward. So again, I would be like, how much do I care about Janice? Is it funny to me enough that I just let her keep going about her merry way because I get some sort of entertainment out of it and F it. Somebody else will can do it. Maybe her. Well, I mean, okay, to be fair. But then third, if you're like, really? You really just want to tell? Yeah, I mean, I can see that sh- it is funny. 
I mean, you know, the the lady with the the, the long skirts and the yes. the hair in a bun, and 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 this like very sexual song comes on. She's like, "Hey, it's my song. It's about me." It's like, oh, I get why that's funny. <laughs> oh, mm. so I have a solution. Okay, just write her an anonymous letter. Mm. Just write a letter, leave it on her desk. No one will have to know. Save everybody in the embarrassment. Don't, we don't have to use work email. They can have a trail. Just say. Right, right. In fact, I would type it and print it so there's not even handwriting. Yeah. Yes, print it. You can even print out the articles from the internet, put it in an envelope, yeah. put it under her keyboard. She can find it. Dear Janice, the song that you think is your song is a song about oral sex. <laughs> Here right. is here right. is the articles. <laughs> yeah, here, here are the sources. I've cited my sources. Uh, a, a concerned coworker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even coworker. God. Right. God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You can't sign it. God. Jesus. <laughs> dear my my child Janice. My dearest Janice. I've looked into your heart and I can see that you're well intentioned, my sweet summer child. <laughs> <laughs> However, when I inspired Brian Adams to write that song, he took it into a different territory and he prescribed a new meaning. It was not about your birth. <laughs> I like signing it as God or Jesus. And then also you could put like All a. Right. Um, What's a god, uh, uh, god thing? Uh, like an angel feather in there? Like a Jesus fish? Oh yeah. sure. Or oh, I see. Yeah. Sand? I don't know. Yeah, like an actual fish, right? Yeah. Like put put it. No, you could even go further. You could get her a gift basket, gift basket with fish and bread in it, and then put the letter in <laughs> yeah. there. Now feed your soul with the, uh -huh. the gift of. That so you may yes. heal. Feed the multitudes, we, Janice. We, you can do we, it. We await your presence in heaven. <laughs> Spread the word. The summer of '69 is not a song that a good Christian would listen to. It is not about your birth. It is about oral sex, <laughs> which which is uh, prohibited. Uh, because it is not because it is pleasurable and not for procreation. Correct. Uh, sorry, Janice. Sorry, Janice. Uh... Now do yourself and all your coworkers a favor and shut up whenever it comes on. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not that big of a deal. Like you're an old lady. We get it. Signed, God. I hope that helps you, Bart. I hope that helps you, Barty. Wow, we're really good at helping people with their yes, so life good. questions. Yep. Amber, yeah. Let's just end it right here. We've done God, we've done great please. work today. I hope a cocaine hippo busts through this wall and tramples me to death. Just just Kool Aid man's right through the wall. <laughs> Good <And> morning, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I've come for your husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, you've got a visitor. <laughs> Okay, yep, yeah, I'm done. Let's end it. If Wait, we already did the email thing, right? Yes. I'm at Rocket Orca on Twitter. Follow me, where I'm going to now write some cocaine hippo fanfic and post it on there. Mm -hmm. I You can find me on Twitter at Red Knees Dave. <laughs> you know, it, it, I don't, I'm not active on there. It's just a gamer handle, uh, but you can check out all my sweet content. Bye, Amber. Bye, Dave. See you in Columbia. Yeah, in Columbia in two weeks. Next, next Owls is going to be on location. Yes, we're going to interview a hippo. <laughs>